Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, I would like first to acknowledge my co-authors that uh, are mostly from the telecommunication engineering department of my university, and also uh, a person from the Andorra government, which is the place we are going to, to discuss. I would like to make the presentation of uh, assessing the, the, the performance of uh, radar interferometry images but from a user point of view, because I am not expert in radar interferometry, but uh, I try to understand what they provide to us. Uh, that is, uh, I want to describe very rapidly the case of the line slide of, of El Forno de Canillo, the existing monitoring network, ground-based monitoring network, and then the, the results, the campaign of the ground-based uh, SAR and the, and the INSAR uh, satellite. Insert. And then discuss a little, very briefly the, the conclusions we got. Uh, this is the, the line slide of Canillo. Canillo is, uh, is uh, a big, one of the largest line slides in the, in the Pyrenees. Uh, it is located in Andorra. Andorra is a, a tiny country in, in, the, in between uh, Spain and France in the Pyrenees. It's uh, only 400 kilo, square kilometers uh, large country. Uh, and and this is the one of the biggest ones. The, the, the height of the, of the country is, is, quite, um, uh, is quite high in the sense that uh, the mean average height of the country is uh, 1,900 meters. So these uh, you know, conditions are not uh, easy to live there. So terrain is scarce, and every single spot is used to, to build houses. And, and in this case, the landslide. Is, on, on, uh, is one of the few places where to build houses, and this is why it's being developed. Um, this uh, landslide was discovered, uh, described for the first time 30 years ago. Uh, it affects mostly um, Silurian shales, is a uh, black carbonaceous uh, shales, which uh, are deeply shaded because they belong to the, they are the detachment layers of the uh, thrust in the Pyrenees. So these, these uh, particular materials uh, have poor uh, geotechnical quality and, and they, they show very low friction angles, uh, less than uh, 20 degrees. And uh, uh, the, the lens that is interpreted that uh, was triggered after the, the glacier retreat and then the, the, the whole slope collapsed. The, it has been studied uh, by several researchers uh, uh, late in the 80s. These are some examples of, of geomorphological sketches from French colleagues, uh, Gérard Soutadé, uh, or these uh, Catalan uh, colleagues from uh, Andoria Santa Cana. And just, well, in this case, uh, the line flat was uh, described of uh, two main uh, events that produced in the line, the line flat deposit, and I would just uh, call your attention on this part that uh, all the researchers so far consider this as an uh, untouched bedrock. We are going to, to see this later. Okay, the, the, the Andorra government uh, was concerned about uh, the stability of the line slide. Uh, the, there have been several hazard maps prepared uh, starting in the, in the 90s. Then the, in the 90s uh, there were hazard maps prepared at a 125,000 scale. Then uh, in the year 2000, maps were prepared at, at 2000 scale, and then detailed studies were performed at 1500 uh, scale, and in which stability analyses were uh, carried out. And also, the, they come out with um, some uh, hazard maps, data hazard maps, in which, well, um, you have areas in which, uh, oops, sorry, well, it doesn't matter in which uh, were considered of high hazard within the line slide because they, they had uh, distinct movement, uh, displacement and, and instability features in, in this case affecting the road. And also uh, in the line slide foot where the Valira River is eroding the toe. So it's, it's understood as well one of the causes that may affect the stability of the whole system. So this is the, the toe of the line slide and the, here you see the, the Valira River just uh, eroding the, the, the toe of the landslide. And these were the two places were considered really dangerous for, and uh, in which the, 
edification will be, building will be forbidden. This is the, the risk management uh, policy that the uh, Andorra government developed, that they zoned the, the landslide. There were areas that were considered that not, uh, could not be built, and areas in which uh, building would be uh, heavily restricted, and other areas in which a building will be allowed, provided that some measurements has, has taken. Uh, it was an assumption in this case that, well, it is assumed that uh, the landslide is under residual strength conditions. Um, the river erosion is, uh, of the toe is, uh, is the driving force of, uh, for landslide movement because the landslide is, is moving and uh, that abnormal seasonal rainfall and snow melting may also affect the activity of the landslide. What happened, there were people that had studied the landslide, they found no criteria or, or factors to consider that a sudden significant reactivation could have happened in the landslide because they considered that the landslide was in residual conditions and then they say, okay, the, uh, under this condition provided that the Angora government start building a protection of the landslide tow against erosion of the river and providing that uh, a large system is implemented, then they consider that the, the development of the landslide could be acceptable. This is something that uh, may argue, but there is no option. So that in the country, there is no free land just to develop, so this is uh, the only option they, they consider. Well, so this is what they decide as a measure undertaken. Um, in the last slide, there is a, a small chapel that uh, has more than 1,000 years old. That means that, well, the, 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 the church was there and that is still there. So that it means that no main uh, reactivations uh, uh, occur. And also a few spots, a few old houses, more than 150 years old, that they show some slight deformation, some cracks, but uh, nothing important. Well, uh, this is uh, one of the works the, the government uh, started, is protecting with, uh, uh, against the erosion of the Barilla River. And also this is the, the, the location of several boreholes drilled to implement the monitoring system that consisted in uh, um, extensometers, uh, rot extensometers, and inclinometers and piezometers within the line slide. What happened, because it, it was thought that uh, the main driving force was the erosion of the river, most of the monitoring uh, borehole, boreholes sorry, were installed in the lower part of the landslide, where the area was being developed. So this is where they put the, the monitoring system. And these are, well, some of the, the results of the, of the incrementers in which confirm something that was already new because also there is a, ch a channel crossing the line slide. The average velocity of the line slide is about one centimeter per year. Well, uh, we suggest uh, what we had in the Safeland project, the EU funded project that uh, ended uh, two years ago. Uh, we suggested to analyze the, the, the line slide using radar interferometry. The, the site is not the, the ideal because it's, it's covered by grass, it has forests, and there are few buildings. So we, we didn't know what were the possibilities of using this technique. But uh, OK, uh, sorry. Uh, so we used two techniques, one, one system, a, a ground-based uh, radar developed by our colleagues of the Telecommunication Engineering Department, and then satellite images, Terrasar X, uh, the, uh, the DEX band. And we try to compare uh, ground-based measurement with satellite measurements. Okay, the results uh, were quite consistent because on the, on the left-hand side we have the, the ground-based radar. On the right-hand side we have the Terrasar X results. And uh, we found that, uh, well, all, all the results were associated to the road and the, wall, and the, the walls uh, around the road and then on the buildings, existing buildings. This is where most of the information came. And uh, results were quite consistent. They showed that uh, we have in the line slide, this is the period October 2010, October 2011, around one, one, a little bit more than one centimeter per year. In the area that was considered that was uh, uh, dangerous, this part, 
uh, the, the rate of displacement raised up to more than two centimeters per year, which was consistent with the measurements that obtained in, in the anclinometer in which for this period we had uh, about uh, three centimeters per year of displacement. So that th there was a coincidence between the, the results of the, of the radar and the results uh, in the ground. What happened is that using Terrasar X, because the ground-based radar was only confined to the lower part, then we realized there was a place, a location, where it was not expected to have uh, movement faster than, than the, the average. So in, in this case, we, we were identified a uh, mobile airflow mass around 400,000 uh, cubic meters, and it's, we name it as a cloth fundus. Uh, going to the field, we, uh, we discovered there were uh, cracks opening, a uh, recent crack that has not been filled, and that they may extend for some tens of, of meters laterally. And, well, these, these cracks, uh, in part, we, we believe are associated to the fact that the, all this area has been rebuilt. The, there is a ski resort. The ski resort dug uh, uh, a big cut and then uh, uh, we understand that what they did is probably destabilize or, or, or accelerate uh, displacement in this area. What happened is we also found evidences that the area was already unstable before the, the cut. So probably what they made is reactivate or accelerate the movement. Now, the, the, uh, the, now we're in the stage that uh, we are trying to check the results because we have no experience with uh, these uh, data. So we are checking, re trying to replicate this data using a GPS system, even though it has less uh, precision, but uh, uh, at least we, we rely on our data and GPS. We are having a, a campaign of two, three years length just to, to, con to check that this, uh, these measurements are, are correct. And then uh, after this, we are going to propose to the Andorra government uh, a new monitoring system just to check whether, how it, what is the behavior of this upper part. So, well, uh, this, our ideas at the beginning was that the, was the erosion, erosion of the uh, Valira River was, was the driving force of the landslide. And, well, the, uh, using these uh, observations of uh, ground-based radar and, and, and satellite radar, uh, we found consistent uh, results in, in, in both measurements. And what like, make us think is that uh, if we had had uh, the, this data before implementing the monitoring system, it would be much better in order to decide where to locate the, all the instruments, the inclinometers, piezometers, and so on, because you have an overall view of the whole behavior of the landslide. So the, the idea is, uh, based on this data, the, the monitor system would be redefined and also, the, the stability analysis of the whole system will be also reanalyzed because we would like to know to what extent instability of the upper part may cause destabilization of the lower part of the landslide. Oh, that's all. Thank you very much. Hmm?